All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. You will have confidence, assurance, faith, when you know that thoughts are things. Remember a simple truth, that every thought, belief, and conviction you hold in this present moment is tending towards manifestation. Thoughts are real, vital, and full of energy and vibration in the realm of mind. Paul said, I die daily. Every moment of the day, old cells are dying and new cells are being born. This is a ceaseless process of death and resurrection taking place in your body every moment of the day. If you fill your mind with the eternal verities and truths of God, your brain will send these spiritual vibrations all over your body, and the new cells will take on a spiritual vibration, and your thoughts of God will become luminous flesh. Look at the withered leaves falling off the trees and the fall of the air. This is to remind you that you must discard old-fashioned, moth-eaten, superstitious ideas and fill your mind with the truths of God which heal, inspire, and elevate you. Eradicate all effete ideas and opinions that do not conform to the eternal truths of God. You are living in a world of densities, frequencies, and intensities. In other words, you are living in a world of vibrations. What we call matter is, according to Einstein, invisible energy vibrating at a rate that makes it perceptible to our five senses. Your thought is a vibration. And if you record your voice on tape, you may also erase it by giving a new message over it. You can build a glorious future by thinking on whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, and you will redesign your future. These thoughts being of a spiritual nature will obliterate and expunge from your subconscious mind all the negative patterns and complexes which have caused all the trouble in your life. This is why you can redesign your future. An ancient aphorism states, you cannot step into the same water twice. This is true. As you stand by the river, the water is constantly flowing. And when you put your feet into the river, it is impossible to place them in the same water a minute afterwards. Likewise, you are in a river of mind, which is forever flowing. And if you received some new ideas this morning at this lecture, you will never again be the same man. God's river of mind, full of God's ideas, is constantly flowing through the mind of all men throughout the cosmos. This is why some scientists, poets, writers, and mystics who are thinking along similar lines may pick up the same idea at the same time even though they may not even know one another. The life principle is constantly flowing through you. It is so imperceptible that you do not feel it until you want a shave or a haircut or a manicure. The thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and opinions which you're constantly dwelling upon during the day are likewise becoming form, function, 
experience an event in your life. For thoughts are things, what we feel we attract, and we have what we imagine we become. And your mind is constantly flowing with ideas and thoughts, and these are becoming experiences in your life. The experiences you have are the result of an accumulation of thoughts, feelings, and reactions that have been building up to a climax. Evil means living life backwards. Spell it backwards, and you have lived, well, I-D-E. You are here to live life gloriously. I am come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Heretofore you asked for nothing, now ask that your joy might be full. These things have I said unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and your joy might be full. And in him there is fullness of joy, and in him there is no darkness at all. Your evil means that you are moving against the stream of life, which is good. Life is rhythm, order, beauty, and proportion. God moves as unity, harmony, joy, and love, for God is spirit, And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit is within you, spirit of joy, spirit of peace, spirit of love, spirit of ecstasy, spirit of goodwill. Stop going against the current of life. Reverse the flow of your thoughts and think in harmony with divine order, love, light and truth. You are not a victim of circumstances or fate. Assume responsibility for your future. Cease blaming God, life, the world, the government, and other people. You are a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe. And whatever you think and feel as true will come to pass. All of God's blessings and riches are available to you. Health, wealth, peace, inspiration, wisdom, creative power, all these are within you, for God in you, walks and talks to you. It is up to you to utilize the wisdom and the power that is within you, wisely and constructively. Let go of old hurts, regrets, rankling memories, and self condemnation Forgive yourself and everybody else. The past is dead. Nothing matters but this moment. Change this moment and you'll change your future. Dream, lofty dreams. Acquire ideals and realize and know that you go where your vision is. Cherish the vision of what you want to be and cease complaining and groaning about the past. Nourish that ideal of yours. Feel the music that stirs in your heart and contemplate the indescribable beauty of God and nature and the loveliness that drapes your purest thoughts. For out of these frequent habitations of your mind will grow delightful conditions and experiences. Your vision is a definite promise of what you one day shall be. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. The oak sleeps in the acorn. The giant sequoia tree sleeps in its tiny seed. The bird waits in the egg. And God waits for his unfoldment in man. You will always gravitate to that which you secretly most love. You will meet in life the exact reproduction of your own thoughts. There is no chance, coincidence, or accident in a world ruled by law and divine order. You will rise as high as your dominant aspiration, and you will descend to the level of your lowest concept of yourself. The man who fails to think constructively, harmoniously, 
and peaceful life, and who is indolent and lazy, seeing only the surface of things, will talk of misfortune, chance, coincidence, and so forth. This is why you hear men say, oh, how fortunate he is. You may observe a beautiful and skilled ice skater who has reached the top and comment, oh, she got all the breaks. However, you should not fail to be aware of her early trials, failures, falls, hurts, and the sacrifices she made or the long and arduous hours of practice and training she spent in order that she might realize her goal and thus thrill your heart. There are many people who do not understand the process, but only perceive the results, and they call it chance. No matter how bad the situation, you can turn it a good account and profit by it. You can make an opportunity out of every problem to serve life and rise higher. In every adversity, there is a seed of opportunity. The late Dr. Harry Gaze told about Dan Morgan, a splendid speaker, who went to a small town in New England one Sunday evening for the purpose of collecting funds in a church for a special project. A terrible storm came up, and the snow and sleet were so heavy that no one was out on the street. The speaker decided to brave the storm, although he doubted that anyone would come to church. At first, no one came but the janitor. Finally, two old ladies came in and sat down. Dan Morgan said, I came here to speak, and I will speak. Dr. Gay said that Mr. Morgan gave a splendid lecture, and one of the ladies donated $15,000. The other woman said, well, it's for a good cause, and if you can give 15000 I can too. Mr. Morgan said he received more money from that congregation than from any other meeting of any size at any time during the lecture tour. If you think, pray, and act in a spiritual way while you are in a predicament, you will change it and turn it to good account. A girl in our audience told me that she believes she will always be pleasantly and wondrously surprised wherever she goes. She has marvelous and unique experiences in all her travels. She has sold this idea to her subconscious mind by repetition, and her subconscious mind responds accordingly. She has conditioned her subconscious to good fortune to a glorious future. There were 15 boys in line looking for a job. The boy at the end of the line wrote a note to the manager which said, Sir, don't hire anybody until you see me. He got the job. The boy used his mind and trusted something within himself to help him say and do the right thing. This was not chance or good fortune. It was the reaction of his subconscious mind to his creative thinking. Wonderful powers are within you. How much do you want what you want? Do you want to change? Do you want to be happy, joyous, and free? Do you want to have good digestion? Then you have to give up your grudges and your beads. Do you want to grow in faith? Then you'll have to give up self-condemnation, self-criticism, and you must cease vilifying and condemning others. To condemn yourself is to generate destructive emotions within you, which bring about all manner of diseases. Self-condemnation is called hell. Self-forgiveness is called heaven, which is peace and harmony. There was a sourpuss working in a wholesale drugstore one time. That was his, that was his nickname, sourpuss. If you said good morning to him, he'd snarl at you. He'd say what's good about him. 
He was always ugly, sarcastic, and vitriolic in his time. He got very ill, and a psychologist told him, he said, force yourself to smile and say something nice to your wife and to everybody during the day. He said, that's a hard task. He said, begin, practice it. So the first morning he came down, he smiled at his wife, and he said, hello, darling. She almost fainted. But he kept it up. He said, expect it every morning from now on. He went into the office and he greeted the girls in the office with a smile, had something cheery to say, and they were surprised also. But he kept it up. He treated the salesman in a very nice way. After a few months' time, he became genial, cooperative, loving, affable, amiable, and a very wonderful, kind man. He decided to change. And he changed. He wanted to change. Take time every morning and evening to implement, or to implant rather, in your subconscious mind, regularly and systematically, the following patterns. Divine right action is mine. Divine guidance is mine. Divine love fills my mind and heart now. Success is mine. Peace of God reigns supreme in my mind. Harmony reigns supreme in my mind and body. God's wealth is circulating in my life, and there is always a divine circle. I am divinely watched over in all my ways. The overshadowing present goes before me to make straight, joyous, beautiful my way. Divine love surrounds me, unfolds me, and wraps me. I am always in the sacred center of God's eternal love. I bear a charm life. The spell of God is always around me. What's true of God is true of me. For God is the reality of every man. Divine love goes before me, making straight, joyous, glorious, and beautiful my way. Wherever I go, I radiate love, peace, and goodwill to all mankind everywhere. To the birds of the air, to the fish of the sea, to all plants and all growing things. I spread the perfume of his presence wherever I go. The peace of the everlasting God fills my soul, my mind, and my body. God is, and his presence flows through me now as harmony, as health, peace, joy, wholeness, beauty, and perfection. God in the midst of me is healing me now. God is inspiring me. I am God's child. God loves me. God cares for me. I am unique. There's no one in all the world like me. God has something wonderful for me to do. God reveals the next step in my unfoldment. This lead comes clearly into my conscious mind. I recognize it. And I go forth boldly because the power of the Almighty is backing me up. Plant these wonderful seeds in the garden of your mind. Do it regularly, systematically, joyously, and gloriously. You are planting patterns in that garden of Eden within you, which is your subconscious mind, which will multiply and magnify exceedingly. Because whatever you deposit in your subconscious mind, it magnifies in a wonderful, wonderful way. And you will discover you are experiencing the great truth of the Bible. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering.